guys. Today I'm going to go over how to program and uh, set up a fuel level uh, gauge on your dash and through your ECU. So um, my personal car has got a fuel cell in it and I've got a 0 to 90 ohm sending unit. Uh, I picked this up from Summit. I don't remember. I'll find the, uh, the link to this one. But they come in different heights. Uh, they're very similar to this is a tube style, so it doesn't bounce around as much as the uh, the arm and float style. But uh, th this, what I'm going to show you is going to work on this, and it's also going to work on this one's got a stock tank in it. Uh, down here, you can kind of see it up in there. Uh, this one has a stock tank in it, a stock sending unit from a uh, Fox body. But I'm going to go over how to... Well, I'm not going to go over how to install it because that should be pretty self-explanatory. Drill a hole, drop it in there, and bolt it down. Uh, make sure to seal it off. Make sure to use good hardware or whatever it comes with. But I'm going to show you how to set this thing up in the software, and then I'll show you how to set it up on the dash. So the first thing that you need to know when it comes to wiring is that uh, all these are, are two-wire. So this, this aftermarket one, um, notice there's two terminals here. This requires a sensor ground from the ECU, and uh, and then you've got a T-type uh, thermosistor um, input to the ECU. So it's going to measure resistance across the sending unit, to, and then we're going to tell it zero to one hundred percent, either empty or full. So you have to run a wire from your sensor ground at the ECU, and uh, or from the dash, and uh, then a input. You know, so basically you've got a wire that goes into the sensor that sends it a sensor ground, a clean ground, and then um, uh, you output a output from this fuel level sensor to your ECU as an input, a T-type input. So um, some of them can be used, you know, some of the Fox body stuff and some of the older cars, they're all chassis grounds. Try them first if you'd like, but uh, typically they... They, uh, they always work when you when you use a sensor ground. So this one's actually, uh, I, I ran a, a wire in this one to um, from the sensor ground back to the ECU. So I'm going to show you on the software on the laptop, and then I'm going to show you on the dash. So hold tight. So here we go. We're going to be putting together a, a fuel level uh, gauge. So... The first thing we need to do, if you don't already have the input output ICF enabled, you go into toolbox and then add individual configuration and scroll down here to I slash O and then just uh, just click, you know, demo or uh, blank or base config blank, whatever you want. So it'll populate this, this tab right here, uh, input slash output. So well, I've already got one built. So I labeled it fuel level and we changed it to a, uh, Thermosistor, uh, thermistor. I have a hard time saying that. I don't know why. Anyway, um, then we go over here to configure, and it's a custom therm. A unit is percentage, okay? And then we've got a sensor minimum is zero percent, sensor maximum is one hundred percent. Because we're gonna, we want this to be able to be viewed on the dash as you know, empty tank or full tank. So uh, now what we have, it's, it's pretty simple. 0 to 100 up here, and as a start, I always put them at 0 to 90 on a pretty linear scale because the sensor that I have is a 0 to 90 uh, ohm resistance fuel level sending unit. So uh, the best way to do this, I put this in as a, as, a, as a, you know, start. This is how you start it. But if you want, you know, ultimate accuracy, what you do is you you run the tank all the way down and then you, check and see what it's reading, right? And uh, that should be zero. And then start adding fuel. So say you put, if you know you've got a 10 gallon fuel cell and you put five gallons in it, um, then then your your 50% number should be right in the middle and it'll be whatever uh, reading you have uh, based off of, uh, you know, what the sensor is giving you if you're using a meter or if you are just live viewing it on the data in Holly and then work your way up to a full tank which is 100 percent but um for pre-canned numbers zero to uh, zero to uh, 90 ohms and zero to 100 percent and then all we do is come over to the pin map and we find the input and there it is fuel level we dropped it over here to a uh, 
to a T-type input. So once that's done, once you do all this in the software, you know, send it to the ECU, and then we can add it to the dash. So that's what I'm going to show you now. Um, let me just get my uh, my girlfriend to hold the camera, and uh, I'll, I'll get in the car and I'll show you on the dash. All right, hang tight. All right, so we've got our input set in the ECU. Here we are at the dash, and we are going to create a, a custom gauge here. So this is just a blank uh, display that I was working on on my own personal car. So we go in here to menu, and then we're going to go to customize. Now all of this is the same. This is on a 12.3 dash, but um, it works the same way on all of them. So click somewhere on the dash, on the display, where you, wherever you want it. Add gauge, and then you're going to come down here. It's going to be way at the bottom. I think i got to find it. But... This thing does too much. So, you have to kind of find what you're looking for, but typically they're all the way at the bottom. Uh, let's see. There we go, fuel level. Hit OK. And then you have to decide what kind of uh, what kind of gauge you want, right? So uh, for this, let's just do analog, right? So there we go. It already pre-populated what we have in there, 0 to 100%. But if that's not what we want, we just click again, go to customize. Uh, units or percentage. Range is 0 to 100. We can set warnings, right? It's so a low alarm at 15, you know, or low alarm, low warning. Um, you know, so if we're low on gas, it'll tell us what's going on. And then we can, um, you can peak hold, which is disabled because we don't really care what the maximum amount of fuel that we had in it was. Um, and then you can change your, you know, foreground color and whatnot. But uh, let's just do this so it's easier to view. We're going to change the size from 200 to 400. Okay, so it's huge, right? <laughs> So, I mean, this is strictly for this purpose only, right? Now, if you're wondering how I've got a little uh, cursor and whatnot, I'm, I'm using a mouse. It's plugged into the USB, um, and I got a little piece of cardboard here, kind of ghetto, but it worked, um, to be able to move it around. It makes life a lot easier instead of using a stylus. So, once you're done, click, hit save. There we go. So, my tank's almost empty. It's, uh, I just, can't really, I haven't uh, put any fuel in it lately, but there we are. We're at 3%, and if I rock the car around a little bit, I still don't have much movement at all out of it. So, um, that's how you do it. That's all there really is to it. So, uh, I'm uh, obviously not going to leave this huge gauge here. So, I'm going to go into menu. I'm going to customize. Okay. I'm going to click this, and let's go to customize again. And I'm going to... I don't want this gauge that big. We're going to trim it back down to 200. And then um, we're going to uh, hit OK. Now it's small and we can click move. Click down, hold it, and you can put it wherever you want. Say we put that over there. And, uh, and you're done. So just hit save. And it saves it. So that's it. Thanks. See you.